Brew watches have received praise from some of the biggest names in watch review channels, and for good reason. They are constantly going out of stock to this day, and in today's episode, we're gonna find out exactly why when we take a look at both the Retrograph Technicolor and the Retrograph Espresso. Let's get into it. Hey, did you know it's a great day to wear a watch? One of these watches is actually available for purchase, so stick around to the end of this video if you're interested for the details. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name's Dave, may the Schwartz be with you, and hey, did you know, it's a great day to wear a watch. Today, I am rocking my Glycine Combat Sub Bronze. Love this thing, uh, definitely has those Tudor Black Bay Bronze vibes, but such a great piece. If you can snag one, I highly recommend it. Let's get into these two watches. And when I first heard of Brew Watches, I was really impressed with both the design and the story behind them. Owner and designer Jonathan draws inspiration from industrial espresso machinery to create pieces focused on and around coffee, something that I know many of us can appreciate and gravitate towards. There are various models available ranging from Mecha Quartz powered pieces, such as the Retrograph and the Metric, to the more refined and minimalist piece powered by an automatic movement like the Retromatic. The two watches that we'll be taking a dive into both hail from the Retromatic lineup, and while these are the same model, you can see some striking differences that give these each their own vibe entirely. You can see these also differ from the more traditional Cobalt or Oxford model, as well as the fun and more eclectic 8-bit brew. We'll start with the Technicolor, as it's the one I've had the most wrist time with. Things to note are the cushion case shape, measuring in at 38 millimeters wide by 41 and millimeters tall. With the case thickness of just over 10 millimeters, and the way the lugs are integrated into the case, you can see how well the 22 millimeter strap disappears into the back of the case. And we do see, of course, this is a chronograph watch with traditional pushers above and below the crown, all in brushed steel. The crown has a neat vented design texture, and we see the brew coffee bean logo also etched into the crown. The case is made of solid 316L stainless steel, and I really love the use of angled brushing around the bezeled edge that blends into this high polish along the side of the case. There's a thin lip of high polish also along the edge where the flat sapphire crystal rests. Moving on to the case back, we see there's a stepped edge in high polish, and then we see horizontal brushing on the case back held in with screws at each corner and etched branding and specs listed as well. The use of primary colors on the dial and handset are what drew me to this version of the Retrograph. The dial is this matte navy blue color that allows for a ton of contrast with the printed branding at 12 o'clock, model name at 6 o'clock, and even more detail along the chapter ring. You'll notice the extraction timer period with the split seconds hand indices that wrap around to the 30 seconds part in white, where it then transitions for that last 5 seconds in yellow. From there, the split seconds indices disappear and we notice simple minute stick indices and a railroad track pattern that continues back to 12 o'clock. Now the simple stick hour markers are also printed in white, but if you look closely, you'll notice the use of red at the edges of each hour contrasted with light blue diamonds, circles, and squares at the opposing end applied in C3 Superluminova. The blue hour and minute hands are simple stick hands also filled with C3 Superluminova, and the red second hand is a needle shape with an open circle counterbalance. These colors allow for quick legibility of the time and when using the chronograph function itself. Now the chronograph movement being used in this watch is the very well known Seiko VK64, a hybrid mecha quartz movement that does not utilize a running second hand, meaning the second hand will be stopped at 12 o'clock while keeping time on the main hands but when you start the chronograph with the top pusher, you'll then see the second hand run, counting minutes on the left sub dial up to one hour. Pressing the top pusher again will start and stop the timer, and pressing the bottom pusher will reset the chronograph back to zero. The right sub dial is simply a 24 hour indicator. This has never been a useful complication for me personally, but that is how Seiko has the movement configured. I like the date wheel positioning at six o'clock wrapped with a thin white arch printed on the dial. The printed date is crisp and clear to read. If I had one recommendation for the date, it would be really nice to see a date wheel in navy blue to match the dial, but again, not a big deal for me personally. Now, one of the things that I love the most about this watch is how much of a strap monster it is. 
It works so well with a variety of styles and materials, ranging from the optional brew beads of rice bracelet, if you like that all metal look, or the simple navy blue Italian leather strap that it comes with, which has a nice vintage taper on it. I personally like the look with this blue Saffiano leather from Straps Co. And if you want to play on that Monaco vibe a bit more, you can go with a navy or gray perforated racing strap with deployant clasp, also from Straps Co. In the fall and winter, I like to reach for this Harris Tweed strap by Vario, which would also work well in navy or even Merlot. Now, I don't have any of the Artem straps in blue, but that too would look amazing with the white contrast stitch on this watch as well. Now, if you want to have that metal bracelet vibe, but don't personally like beads of rice bracelets, you could even go for something like a flat link bracelet like this one here in 22 millimeters from Straps Co. Definitely has a bit more flash to it, but something a little different. So let's move over to the Espresso Retrograph. Immediately, I got immersed in all of these coffee colored tones, ranging from rose gold in the PVD colored case to almost copper-like colored hands with darker browns in the sunburst dial and the smooth leather strap with dark brown contrast stitching. I personally like the more minimalist contrast on this version, using only white and brown. The legibility is easier on the espresso as a result of this. That crisp pop of white on the second hand, the reflective minute and hour hands allow them to pop out over the dial in direct lighting. The matte texture on the subdials also gives the watch a bit more muted look from afar. It doesn't immediately stand out as a chronograph or sporty watch to me. And at a quick look or glance, it actually has more of a formal and dressy appearance, at least in my opinion. Now, I would love to see how the look of this watch would change with the use of a rose gold beads of rice bracelet, but I don't have one. If someone else out there has done it, I would love to check it out. Now, various textures would also play well on this espresso retrograph, like a pecan colored Harris tweed strap from Vario in the fall or winter, maybe even a suede or croc leather strap as well. It's also not until you look up close where you see the intricate details of the recessed subdials, that edge of shadow and sloped ray hot along the subdials is really a treat when first discovered. And these are just some of those small details that you get to see once you get up close with a macro lens. I definitely have a different level of appreciation for all of the thought and detail that went into this watch. Now I had mentioned one of these are for sale and it's the Espresso model, which was kindly loaned in from a friend to do this review and he mentioned it's available for purchase to mention that to you guys and gals as well. Now the timing of this is just right as these are currently out of stock on the Brew website. So if you're interested, hit me up on Instagram. And we can work out the details. What are your thoughts on these Brew Retrograph watches? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. It really helps my channel grow and I appreciate it. Until next time, may the Schwartz be with you. Take care.